Hi guys, we are back with the quant webinar today. Uh, we're going to discuss overlapping sets today. Now, this is something that I have taken before in a webinar. And the reason that we are revisiting it uh, is that, um, you know, some learners were a little uncomfortable with a couple of sets questions. In fact, we've had, uh, you know, a few queries on those. And it has always been a bit of a struggle to explain them. Uh, they are from our curriculum itself. Um, and, uh, you know, they're a little tricky, though the solution to them is fairly simple. Uh, but you know, there are those questions where a diagram isn't really going to help because we can't really explain in a diagram, in a static diagram. So that is why usually I do like to provide diagrams with solutions. But then in those questions, I've not really provided one. So then one of the learners suggested that why don't we have uh, videos on that? And I thought that was a really good idea. So um, then I just jumped on to uh, including them in our next webinar. So today we're going to do those uh, two overlapping sets questions, first of all, which are from our own curriculum. Then we are going to do some official questions as well. Um, these official questions are going to be a little tricky. So then, uh, you know, um, we will see how to, you know, how to easily handle them. And uh, the last question, if we do reach that, the sixth question is going to be from the GMAT focus test, practice test. Yeah. So in case you've not taken it, you intend to take it as seriously as possible, etc. Then you can um, leave the webinar just before the last question. So hopefully I'll remember and I'll uh, remind you once again before we reach the last question. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's start. I'll share my screen with you. Just give me a moment. All right, so then uh, this is our first question. I hope you can see it. I can't really read it. Let me pull it down a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to give you a couple of minutes. Try it out on your own first. Guys, the Q&A has been enabled. So in case you do get the answer, share it with me in the Q&A. Okay. 
good, good Agnil, good Zainab, Divya, good. Uh, Harry, no. Okay, let's discuss it. Yeah, how are we going to solve this question? So we'll discuss it together now. Look, you know, when I read 150 delegates participated in a certain conference of these 120 speak English, the moment I come to this and I know that this is overlapping sets, right? I know this is a Venn diagram question. So overlapping sets question is by default for me a Venn diagram question. Until unless it's a double set matrix that you can pretty much see, you know, the moment you look at the question that, okay, there are going to be like very few questions for which you'll actually use a double set matrix. But normally your uh, overlapping sets questions are when diagram questions, right? whether they are your regular overlapping sets or whether you're using maximum, minimum. We've discussed this before in a previous webinar that even in that, your Venn diagram is the best tool that you have available. So um, frankly, I don't really remember any formulae of um, overlapping sets. I mean, except for that total is equal to A plus B plus C, right? Uh, minus. The, so except for that very, very basic formula, I don't remember any of the other formula because I never really need to use it because, you know, each formula, it has something very slightly different from the other one. And um, I might get confused, right? Whether it was a plus uh, two or a minus two here, whether it is a plus three or a minus three here. So then, and learning as such is not my strength at all. So then I always will prefer to use Venn diagram. There's going to be no confusion and I'll be able to see exactly what I have to do. So I'll talk about that uh, a little later in you know one of the official questions. For now, let's just, the idea over here is that event diagram is what you're really going to rely on in all cases. So let's go ahead and try to do that. So I have 120 people who speak English. So I'm going to make my, this is 120, let's go with a thinner line. Then 120 speak uh, Spanish. So I have Spanish over here. This is also 120 and 120 speak Chinese. So I have Chinese here and 120, right? Of course, as we've discussed that a Venn diagram question must have the rectangle around it. It must have total at top and it must have a none over here as well because these are things that we might forget. Like, for example, if I do not put the rectangle around it, then I might forget none. And then there are going to be uh, trap options in the questions where if you forget none, then you know, you'll get the wrong answer, but that will be one of the options. And it does happen with us sometimes that we forget the neither or the none. So then that is why we have to ensure that we make the rectangle and put down none over there as well. Okay, now, now what is given to me? And I know that total is equal to 150. So the ones who do not speak English, do not speak French or Spanish either. Now, what is the meaning of this? You know, when, when I look at it, when I look at my diagram, what do they mean by the ones who do not speak English, do not speak Spanish either? Um, look, what I'm going to do over here is, you know, I would have made this diagram in my scratch pad, right? So I'm going to put my hand over here. Say I, you know, put my hand over here. I'll try and hide the English circle. Yeah. And then I'm going to say, that everyone who's here, they are talking about these people, the ones who are not in English. Is that okay? The ones who are outside English. These are the people that I'm talking about. Fine. Okay. So what does it say? That these people are not, do, uh, do not speak Spanish either. So essentially the people who are lying outside the English circle in this particular area, they are not lying in the Spanish circle at all. Yeah, they do not speak Spanish. That means that here, this, this is the area where people are speaking Spanish, but not English. I have been given that this is zero and this is zero. Do you understand this, right? It's obvious from our diagram, the ones who do not speak English are all these people, but we are given that these people do not speak Spanish either, which means that in this part, and in this part, I have zero people. There are no people in this part because this entire thing is my Spanish circle, right? Okay, 
Now look at the next one. Also, the ones who do not speak Chinese. Now that means that this circle. So now I put my hand on this circle. That is, I try to hide this circle. And I say that the ones who are outside this Chinese circle, I'm talking about all these people, right? All these people outside the Chinese circle. I am given that all these people, they do not speak Spanish either. So that means uh, in, in all these, there are no uh, people who speak Chinese, the um, Spanish, the ones who are outside the Chinese circle. Where are other are people, the, you know, is there a region where I could have people who do not speak Chinese, but who speak Spanish? I could have had over here, right? These are the people supposedly who do speak Ch uh, Spanish. So I have been given that if they lie outside the Chinese circle, then they do not speak Spanish either, which means this is also zero, right? As from my second statement, from this statement, now I know that th here also there are no people. There are there are no people who do not speak Chinese and who they do not speak Spanish either. So then this is also zero. All right. So then I have a zero here, zero here, zero here. But I have 120 people who speak Spanish, right? I'm, I've been given this. So then where do these 120 people lie? Nowhere but over here. There is no other possibility. These all these 120 have to lie over here, right? All right. How many delegates speak all three languages? Well, we've got our answer. The 120 people speak all the three languages, right? So our answer is 120 over here, right? Now, you know, and that's it. Uh, there is our answer, right? And if, you know, this is how we are looking at the question. If, if we make the Venn diagram and if this is how we're thinking about the question, it will take you, what, 30 seconds to solve it, isn't it? Yeah, you don't have to get confused with, uh, you know, who lies where, how many people lie here, there, nothing at all. Automatically, you can see the answer. You know, the first statement, this one, it gives you that here and here there are zero people. And the second statement gives you that here also there are zero people. So then all the 120 have to lie over here. When I look at my diagram, it makes perfect sense. Of course, there cannot be more than 120 over here. Sorry, not 180, 120. Uh, of course, there can't be any more than 120 here because only 120 people speak Spanish. Obviously, you can't have more than that, right? So then uh, how many people speak all three languages? It has to be this region only and it has to be all 120. Right. So here my answer is any doubts over here.